you're already subscribed to the channel, which you totally should be by the way, then chances are you've heard me talk about going back post on multiple occasions. But I haven't really made an entire video dedicated to what going back post actually is. I've seen plenty of your comments asking what it is and how you're still confused about it. Some of you even claim that going back post is a bad idea and how you should never do it. Either way, looks like I've got some explaining to do. So why wait any longer? Pull out your notebooks, sharpen your pencils, cause it is time to rank up. Firstly, let's break down what it means when someone tells you you should have gone back post. Here's a little test. Where on the screen do you think back post is? If you gave any answer to this question, you're wrong. Cause there's not enough information. Let me explain. The position back post depends on where the ball is located. So if the ball is on this side of the field, then back post would be over here. And same thing if the ball is on this side of the field, then back post is now over here. In some cases, the ball may be pretty much in the center of the field. And in this situation, back post is determined by whichever direction the ball is likely headed. And if it doesn't appear to be going anywhere, then either post could be considered back post. Good, now you know what the back post actually is, but when's the right time to actually use it? For the sake of simplicity, all of the examples I'll give will be 3v3, but back post rotations are important for 2v2 as well. Now, there's a reason they're called back post rotations. Rotating is like taking turns, so you'll essentially be taking turns at going back post. If you have two players at back post, that's bad. If you have zero players at back post, that's also bad. So how do you avoid these issues? Well, this may be tough for some of you lower ranked players, but you actually have to look at more things than just the ball. Paying attention to your teammates? What? Who does that? Well, this won't work if you don't, so you better start learning it now. When you see a teammate rotate behind you at back post, that's basically a signal for you to push up to either front post or just challenge the play, depending on the situation. Regardless of what's happening, you can't stay at back post when you've got a teammate ready to rotate behind you. They're basically saying, hey, I got your back, you can push up. So you can move up and they can take your place at back post. When there's a ton of pressure being put on your team, you basically just repeat this rotation process until you get a good clear. And hopefully you'll get it fast because when there's a ton of pressure on your team for too long, you'll eventually not have enough boost to make the final save or you'll go out of your way for boost and you won't be able to get back to back post in time, leaving a gap in your rotation. There are ways to relieve this pressure on defense easier, but I'll get to that later in the video. So, let's test your knowledge so far. Yes, yes, good. Oh, no, no, come on, you had it, what are you doing? I'm sorry, I, I just get so frustrated when people don't go back post, you know? <sighs> okay, so what went wrong here? Well, it's pretty obvious that they should have gone back post, but why exactly would it have worked? Let's dive in. When analyzing plays like these, it's important to look at it from the top view and think about each player's area of coverage. What I mean by that is the places they could get to given short notice. I like to think of area of coverage as 45 degrees to the right and to the left about the center of the car. The reason I don't include anything behind the car is because it usually takes a good amount of time for a player to 1. kill their forward momentum and 2. reverse and then jump into the air to make the save. If you've ever tried to save a shot that was behind you, you know what I'm talking about. That's why I consider this your area of coverage. Now, with that in mind, it's much clearer to see why you should defend from the back post. However, you may be thinking that if you're at the back post, you're basically leaving the front post exposed. To which I say, no you're not. Take a look at this. Starting out with no momentum, I can consistently reach the opposite corner of the goal in about a second and a half using only 24 boost. If I have 40 boost or more, I can do it even faster. It really doesn't take long to reach the other corner of the goal if you're positioned at the back post. You might be thinking now that you should position yourself in a spot where you can reach both the front post and the back post in about the same amount of time, so probably somewhere around here. But I'll tell you right now that that's also wrong. You've got the right idea that you want to reach the front post and the back post at about the same time, but the large benefit of positioning yourself completely at the back is that you know the ball is going to be shot in front of you. Knowing this for a fact allows you to anticipate the ball's position before you even read where it's actually being shot. Basically meaning that you can have a quicker reaction time if you stay completely at the back post. 
Okay, so now you know what going back post is and why it's important. But, just like with every tip in Rocket League, there are some specific situations where breaking the rule is better. However, if you're still trying to get back post rotations solidified, don't start breaking this rule yet. You need to learn the fundamentals of how back post rotations work and get them down for yourself. Basically, if you're lower than champ, going back post every single time will help you rank up tremendously. You won't run into any problems with it. However, if you're a high champ player, you'll sometimes notice it's hard to relieve pressure if you just continue this normal rotation. Earlier I mentioned that if you just continue doing normal back post rotations for a long time, your team may eventually run out of boost and not be able to make a save. And you don't want to go out of rotation to grab more boost, cause then you probably won't be back in time. This is why normal back post rotations don't always work at the higher level. If someone gets a clear, the other team can usually just read it and keep that pressure on that they already had. To fix this, you need to alter your normal back post rotations by just a little bit. Instead of going for a clear and then immediately rotating back post again, you can remain slightly upfield for a little bit longer to make yourself available for a pass. And if no pass comes, then you head straight to back post again. Sometimes it can be hard to get the ball out of your half on your own, so having someone there to pass to can help relieve the pressure that's on your team and start a possible counterattack. Through trial and error, you'll start to learn exactly how long you should stay upfield open for a pass and where you should position yourself to be most useful. But then again, if you don't have normal back post rotations down, don't skip that step. Learn those first, and then you can upgrade to this more advanced version. Now let's talk about boost. Earlier I mentioned that you don't want to go out of your way to grab boost on these rotations, but the thing is, there are some exceptions to that. With standard back post rotations, you want to mainly focus on grabbing the mini pads and that corner boost pad behind back post, if you know you have enough time. The reason you don't want to grab any of these pads is because you won't be able to tell if you have enough time to grab boost until you're about right here in your rotation. So at this point in the rotation, you can decide if you have enough time to grab the big pad, or if you don't. Along with that, on screen now are some really common mini pad paths that you can use. At pretty much any rank below Grand Champ, mini pads are extremely underappreciated, especially on defense. You don't need that much boost to make a save. As I showed earlier, you could get to the top corner pretty fast with only 24 boost. So it's much more important that you don't go out of your way to grab boost if there's any risk of you causing a gap in rotation. So when you're doing back post rotations, follow the mini pads and you'll be completely fine. As for the more advanced version of backpost rotations, sometimes it is okay to grab these big pads. Like I mentioned, the main difference is that you're pausing for a little bit to make yourself available for a pass. So if you want to make yourself available over near the corner or near the mid boost pad, that could work. But if you can, it's still super important to stay on the path of mini pads. Don't get too greedy for boost if you know your teammates won't be able to pass it to you. Alright, now I'm going to cover some examples from games that I've been in. For this first one here, you can see that I'm recovering to get back on defense, I follow that mini pad path I talked about earlier, and I rotate at the back post behind my teammate. This signals my teammate that they can push up here because I've got their back, so they go up for the challenge. I then push up and try to follow their challenge because I see my other teammate rotating behind me at the same time. I end up not getting the greatest touch, so the other team keeps the pressure. However, now instead of immediately going straight to back post, I point my car upfield to give my teammate a passing option like I talked about earlier. Instead of booming it downfield and giving away possession, my teammate passes it over to me and we score on the easy counterattack. Here's another example. I showed this clip earlier in the video, but I haven't given an explanation of it. So I start off rotating back to recover onto defense. I can already see my teammate is rotating behind me, which basically means I can automatically push up to front post or near the play since they'll already have my back at back post. So I cheat up near the play and the ball ends up going over my head. Instead of just going straight back here, I wait upfield for a little bit to allow my teammate to pass it to me. They do exactly that and I redirect it downfield to transition onto offense. These are both examples of higher level back post rotations, so if you're only around platinum rank, then you probably don't need to worry about your teammate needing to pass it to you to get a clear. Now, I know there are other forms of back post rotations and defensive rotations in general that also work, but this is the form of rotating that I found to be most effective for me when I was trying to rank up. 
If you've been GC for a while and you've made it this far into the video, before you comment telling me I have no clue what I'm talking about, keep in mind that this video is purely the basics of defensive rotations, so if you are GC, these forms of rotations may not always work for you since plays at that level are mostly circumstantial. As for the other 90% of my viewers, if this information is new to you, you can learn a lot from it. I actually started trying this rotation method back in Season 6 when I was only Plat 2, and by the end of the season I was Diamond 3, so backpost rotations actually helped me go up 4 ranks in one season. Even though there are some specific circumstances when it's okay to go front post, having this strict set of rules to go back post is super useful to get your rotations on lock, and then you can learn when it's okay to break that set of rules. If you're still confused on how these rotations work, you might want to try watching the video again because there is a ton of information packed in here and it's all super important. I tried to put a ton of effort into the editing of this video to make sure it's as clear as possible because this is a super important subject. Lastly, if you're not subscribed to the channel, please do. I'm going to be making a ton more helpful videos like these, so make sure you hit subscribe so you don't miss a future video. Other than that, have a great day, and don't forget to go back post. Stupid.